Hello and welcome to Deakin's Virtual Open Day. My name is Olivia Millard and I'm a Senior Lecturer in Performing Arts and uh, I'm the course director of the Drama and Dance Majors in the Bachelor of Creative Arts. And I'm here with Dr. Sianan Mitchell, who is a lecturer in film, TV and animation. And she's the course director of the um, Bachelor of Film, TV and animation. And I'm also here with Dr. Donna McRae, who is a senior lecturer in film, TV and animation. And she's the course director of the honours and masters by coursework in film, TV and animation. So before we begin, we would just like to acknowledge um, acknowledge that we're gathered here physically dispersed but virtually constructed and take a moment, moment to reflect on the meaning of place and in doing so recognise the various traditional lands on which we do our business today. So we would like to um, acknowledge the Wadawurrung people of the Kulin Nation on whose country our Geelong campuses are located, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation on whose campuses our Burwood, on whose country our Burwood, camp, Burwood campus is located and the Peak Wurrung people of the Ma Nation on whose country our Warrnambool campus is located. So just an overview of what we'll be um, uh, sharing with you today. So we'll each talk, uh, Donna, Sian and I will just talk a little bit about um, the three courses, the undergraduate in film and TV and dance and drama, and just to a little bit about the course, um, uh, about the facilities, about um, the kinds of um, activities that you undertake, and then um, uh, how to access the courses and where you, where you might kind of end up after you've undertaken our courses. So this is just a kind of general overview of the courses from 2023 that we are rolling out um, and the sort of structures that we have in place. Um, there's a really strong focus on um, work integrated learning and looking at future career goals and pathways. Um, we also have these units that you'll you'll see a little bit later on um, that are thematic core units. So these are sort of things that, that um, are really important to all our different kinds of practices that we do um, in these courses. And then there's options around doing majors, um, to double majors with a couple of electives thrown in, or you can choose a major and two minors. And so there's a really nice kind of way that you can Kind of think about the sorts of things you want to learn and there might be you know for example minors that will really help complement um, the majors that you want to do as well so we'll, we'll have a look at that a little in a little bit more detail in a moment so as i've mentioned too that um there's a real focus on thinking about your career um, and that a lot of what you do um, throughout each of these courses is is Focusing, yes, on career pathways and where you want to head up, head, but but also really thinking about um, um, who you are as a creative person um, and learning these sorts of other skills to help augment perhaps those practical um, those practical skills and knowledge that you'll be focusing on throughout each course. So being a really creative thinker or being a really critical thinker and how that really improves your own creative practice. And so we have a, a kind of different focus or a kind of merged focus around critical, creative, um, industry and technical. Sian, could I just add there that yeah. um, as Sian was uh, mentioning before, you can choose to do um, a double major or a major and two minors. But what's also possible throughout these um, degrees in the School of Communication and Creative Arts is to really build a set of majors and minors that really um, uh, allows you to follow your own interests, to, to build your own kind of um, creative identity and kind of head towards work practices, which are probably unique to you. So there's really a um, possibility for a, a quite a, a broad range of um, combinations. And we'll talk about that a little bit more as we go through the presentation. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so let's get stuck into film, television and animation then before we get to um, performing arts as well. Uh, so this is just a little bit of information around when our intakes are. We still have two intakes this year. Um, so in trimester two, which starts in July this year and another one in trimester three in November. Uh, and then of course, we've got the three intakes next year as well. So um, the first or big one there would be of course the, the March intake. So if you're you know, a school leaver, that might be the intake that you'd be looking at. 
The duration of the course is three years full time. There is a part time equivalent. And for us, most of our units uh, take place uh, on the Burwood campus because you need to have access to spaces and equipment. Um, and there's a lot of sort of collaborative work that you'll be doing in film, TV and animation as well. And so a lot of those those sorts of units take place on campus. There are some options for a few online bits and pieces as well, though. So what are you going to learn? Um, if you are a storyteller or you have a creative concept or you really like shooting stuff, even with your phone, that's fine. Um, you, you get to do all of that sort of stuff. So we, we help you develop your story ideas, um, whether they be fiction, nonfiction, or perhaps a bit, little, bit more experimental, um, audio visually speaking. So you kind of get to experience all of those different ways of creating screen stories. Um, of course, that is also through live action and animation as well. Um, so uh, you get a sort of taste of all the different kinds of roles that um, uh, are comprising of, of a screen work, you know, directing, writing, cinematography, editing, all of these sorts of things. Um, and then also get to sort of what Olivia was saying before, you do get to kind of then perhaps delve into, into areas through um, the major minor combinations that you can, you can look at as well. So um, you might get a little bit more specialist in a few of those sorts of choices that you can make. But basically we want, we want to prepare you to have an idea of what to, what to look out for when you're going to, you know, step out into the world as a, um, a creative storyteller and a screen storyteller. We have three majors. Um, so within that, we have an animation major, we have producing screen content, and we have a screen production. And I'm just going to explain the difference between those. Animation might be a little bit self-explanatory in that um, you get to, if you're, if you're kind of animation inclined and that's what you want to kind of head into, um, that's, that's the major that will be looking at sort of 2 and 3D uh, animation uh, techniques, skills, knowledge, applications. So um, it could be anything from building a 3D environment for an animation or yeah, which will also sort of transfer into other kinds of media as well. Um, or it could be a, a more sort of 2D approach that, you want to, that you're wanting to take. There's also character development and design and those sorts of things that you'll be you're looking at in that major as well. Um, within that too, there's also areas looking at visual effects um, some virtual production and how those things tie in together. So uh, it kind of is quite a, a well-rounded focus on both 2 and 3D animation for different areas of screen production. And we could think about maybe even games production in that context too. Um, you know, after you graduate, you can apply those skills in those sorts of areas of creative industries as well. Producing screen content focuses more on um, developing concepts and story ideas, and then getting the kinds of skills and understanding of how to produce those, um, those stories. So there's quite a bit of screenwriting in that major. There's a screen producing unit. So that's kind of looking at, um, obviously budgeting is really important to all of this stuff, but also kind of looking at where you would be um, wanting to get those works out there in, in public, you know, like a distribution strategy or film festivals or, or that sort of stuff. Um, and then it culminates in a screenwriting project uh, as well. So, oh, and you get to also do an uh, experimental film in, um, in that major too. So you get a bit of a taste of that as well. In the screen production major though, that's where we look at things like the, the more sort of perhaps what we would call above and below the line roles in screen. So cinematography, um, there's an, a great acting and directing unit in that. There's some TV studio production. Um, post-production sound and that kind of culminates as well in a, in a capstone project at the end and a documentary project you get to do in that too. So um, if you were going to go down the route of doing a double major in film TV animation you've got three kind of combos there that I think work quite nicely. Um, if you're more interested in perhaps live action content then the producing screen content and screen production double major is gives you everything. Um, or if you're interested in animation, then it might be something along the, the animation major and maybe the producing screen content major there too. So you can look at your animation concepts and screenwriting in that process as well. 
Or, of course, you've got a bunch of miners that you can have a look at too. Um, I'm not going to go into probably as much detail into those ones, and we can sort of talk about that in the live Q&A after this. Um, but the, the miners have um, are comprised of four units, mainly drawn from, from the majors in different kind of combinations. So you could pick... Um, uh, producing screen content minor with the screen production major, for example, and maybe an animation or motion graphics. Or you could also look at other minors in um, other disciplines, to, depending on your interests as well. Um, you'll notice there there's a film studies minor. So that's a really great one for those of you who perhaps want to broaden, also sort of broaden the horizons around um, your understanding of screen culture uh, and perhaps some other roles around film criticism and writing. Um, and exhibition studies and things like that. Um, and then there's, there's a script writing minor down there too. I wanna to just note that um, that does very heavily just involve sort of writing and writing practices across different, different kinds of screen forms as well. Um, I've basically just said all this, so I won't go into too much more detail. Again, um, I'm hoping there'll be some wonderful questions coming up in the live Q&A. Um, but I guess I'll just highlight that you do um, get to look at different forms of screen production. So as I've mentioned, it's fiction and nonfiction and experimental. So it's not just as your sort of live action short film. It's a whole different range of things that you can make. Oh, and sort of looking at like episodic television and things like that as well, potentially. So there's, there's a lot of different different um, different forms that a lot of these skills are transferable across. The other thing too that's really important and some of the other units that I haven't really acknowledged so much here is also really asking you to think sort of critically about your work and be a reflective sort of practitioner. So understanding where the, the, the stories that you want to create fit within the broader screen culture. So it's understanding the history, of, of filmmaking, for example, and also a kind of contemporary focus on, on you know, what, what, what is being made at the moment and what seems to be um, the way that, that, that screen stories tellers engage their audiences. And part of that too is thinking about, you know, the kinds of skills you need to do that. Um, so thinking about or, or having practice of communicating really effectively. I mean, making a screen production, you will be collaborating with multiple people um, and hands down, if anything goes wrong, it's down to communication most likely. So um, it's really uh, building those communication skills with you and your collaborators um, that are just so integral to be a filmmaker these days, or all the time. Um, using different technologies, how to pick the right technology to use that will cut down on time and make life more efficient for you. Um, thinking critically, as I mentioned, so just you know, understanding um, how to where your work will fit more broadly and, you know, and solving problems. So it might be sort of this lateral thinking that you need to do to, to efficiently solve problems as they arise. Um, how to work both independently and in teams. So um, there'll be things that you'll need to do on your own and you'll, but you'll need to deliver something at a certain point in a certain deadline. So you need to be able to manage that um, for yourself. And that's a really important skill to have as a, as a creative person um, working in industry, especially. And of course, as I mentioned, collaborating and, um, and working in teams is really key. That last point there, I do also really want to highlight understanding cultural and social diversity. So, so important, especially um, at the moment where we have a lot of discourse around representation, who's on screen, who gets to make what, um, and having and being very sensitive um, to, those, uh, to those issues in screen production is, is absolutely um, key. So some of the facilities that we have that you get to have access to, we have a number of studios. Um, we have a sound studio, for example, where you get to do some sound production and Foley. Um, there's film studios, there's a TV studio, there's green screen studios, um, there's some motion capture spaces. Um, the other thing is that we have an, an incredible tech support team um, or tech team that uh, uh, look after our our equipment and those spaces and they are super super helpful um, and can help you know if you need uh, if, if you have any questions about gear and stuff like that they're amazing um, I'll also just highlight too that we have a great um, costume store and prop store um, they're really important particularly when you're applying um, high quality production design to your projects very very important uh, of course we have edit suites and labs 
Um, they, uh, there's, a, there's an on-campus server where you can um, back up and save your work, but it's, it's accessible on campus. It's called EditShare. You have access to all different kinds of software that you need. So, you know, Avid software, industry standard software there, um, as well as obviously, you know, Adobe Creative Cloud um, and um, Premiere Pro and those sorts of things too. For um, animators, there's also an animation stop motion lab. Um, so you have access to DSLR cameras for that, you know, lighting boxes um, and other kinds of uh, software and bits and pieces that you need to create those sorts of stop animation um, pieces of work. Getting into a bit more detail, we have a range of cameras um, that you kind of build up and work towards. So we have those really high-end industry cameras like the Ari Alexa um, and the Red Epic. Um, we also have some excellent, there's some fantastic actually Sonys that we've, we've got in that are just brilliant, um, really um, lightweight as well. So you can get a high quality camera, but you don't have to trug along so much gear, um, which tends to happen. Um, we of course have all the sort of supporting group stuff too. So um, sliders and dollies and things like that. There's, and you get tripods, um, lighting kits, all different kinds of lighting kits um, and audio recording devices. So Zoom recorders, which you can take out on location, um, boom mics, lapel mics, um, all, all that stuff that you need to capture great to sound. So this is sort of just looking at some of the, the career opportunities that you will have um, in film, TV and animation. So obviously you can be an animator, funny that. Um, you can of course be a technician, audiovisual technician, um, camera ops, uh, producing all different kinds of screen work, directing. Um, there's a kind of, there's a, because we're dealing with storytelling predominantly in some way, whether it's audiovisual or in writing, writing scripts, um, these sorts of skills are really transferable across so many different kinds of media. So we could look at things like journalism here as well, um, or, you know, writing scripts across different kinds of media, TV, film, um, web content, that sort of stuff. So looking at how to tell narratives and stories in different ways. So you get those sorts of skills too. Um, you can get into lighting, into production design, being an art director, that sort of thing. Um, and of course, working across TV in different ways and in sound as well. So I just wanted to highlight here a couple of the work um, integrated learning opportunities that, that our students have had. Um, and I'll introduce you to a student in a moment who will just quickly talk about one of their experiences. But this is something that you take near the end of your degree in the third year. Um, there will be work integrated learning units that you have, that you deal with those are the future career units mentioned earlier that you um that helps prepare you I guess for going out into the workplace um and giving you some experiences and, and key sort of knowledge there we've had um internships though at ACME um we've had them across sort of broadcast tv um so WTFN is a is a network that we've had students be placed at and they're doing sort of all different kinds of things there um same with Fremantle um, as, a, as a TV production studio, um, AFL Media, the same. So we do have a live um, uh, outside broadcast ban um, that we tend to trawl around to, to some sporting events and do live broadcasts. Um, and that's helped sort of position us with, with places like the AFL to do various bits and pieces. Um, SBS, uh, the uh, Melbourne International Animation, Animation Film Festival. So we've had some students get some experience in programming there and stuff as well, which is really, really useful for them. Uh, and of course, Dream Screen, which is a, a fairly new um, virtual production studio that's opened up in Epping and we have a partnership with them. And so I'm just going to introduce now one of our students who did do a placement with Dream Screen at the end of last year. His name is Naveen Kanti. Um, and he'll just speak a little bit about what he did um, at Dreamscreen last year. Hi everyone, I'm Naveen um, and I'm in second year bachelor degree in film, TV and animation. Um, I would say I'm very fortunate to get internship with uh, Dreamscreen Australia, which is a virtual production company and uh, it um, has largest uh, um, screen in Australia. It was an amazing experience as we were working on actual film sets. One day it was 1800 period set and the other it was a bar lounge. Um, we get our hands on some of the best equipment there is, maybe lights, camera, or lenses. And the best part was to be around such, um, such an experienced uh, technicians, directors, and producers. I'm so thankful to 
Clayton, Rowan, Aaron, Sean, and Bridget. They're all so accommodating and um, just great to work with. Um, this experience definitely gave me an understanding of uh, workflows into different procedures. Um, it gave me a deeper insight into the industry and uh, a huge confidence to go ahead in the industry. Um, I would extend my gratitude to Wiki, Liz, and the entire Will team. Um, and thanks for Deacon to making this happen. Thank you. And the last one of the last things I'll talk about is Deacon TV. So this is a student led student run um, club where there's all different kinds of events that they organize. So it might be screenings, catching up, um, talking about the latest film that, that they've seen, um, games nights, industry talks, which are fabulous. Um, they've had film festivals in the past um and all different kinds of ways of getting engaged outside of your units and getting to know one another and kind of becoming a really sort of tight cohort so that's a that's an excellent club that you should have a look into should you study with us <laughs> okay so thanks sian and donna so um uh i'm the course director of the dance and drama disciplines within the Bachelor of Creative Arts. So the Bachelor of Creative Arts is a newly formed course which will uh, start in 2023. And as we uh, have discussed earlier in the presentation, you could choose um, a combination of major and minor. So this part of the presentation is really about the dance and drama or theatre um, parts of uh, that um, BCA course. Um, uh, so this is just um, a student actually who went through the um, undergraduate dance course and, and in fact then did um, uh, the honours course and maybe I'll just highlight that um, what she um, seemed to really enjoy about the course was it has a practical component um, that she really was pushed technically as a dancer but also she was able to develop her own understanding of um, her interest as a, as a creative practitioner, as, as a dance maker. So um, you've probably heard of um, uh, the term soft skills and Sian's already mentioned when talking about the Bachelor of Film and TV and Animation that collaboration and communication are really um, important. So what I would add, I guess, particularly in the um, dance and, and uh, theatre disciplines is collaboration, um, is incredibly important as is um, uh, communication and creativity, but also the kind of embodied understanding of those things. So soft skills are often talked about the kind of skills that when robots take over the world and everything is done is done by computers, um, the soft skills are the things left that humans um, will be required for the kind of um, collaborative, creative, and also um, uh, bringing our bodies into situations. Um, so there's a, a suggestion here from this um, academic Richard Sennett, who's an anthropologist, who was saying, um, actually, um, uh, collaboration, cooperation, they're not easy. We think that we know how to do them, but actually through undertaking the kinds of um, units, studies, assessment tasks in our dance and, and theatre courses, you're actually practising those skills, which then enable you to apply them across a whole range of scenarios. So you may kind of go on from our courses to be practitioners, but you also might apply those skills in a, in a huge range of contexts. So I guess that's um, the meaning behind the creative skills. They're hard skills, they're soft skills, but they're hard to acquire. So what's in um, the major in these two courses? So in the dance course, you will do uh, what is often known as technique classes. So the, the physical learning of techniques. So we do contemporary dance technique, but we also do um, uh, ballet, contact improvisation, and some other dance styles. So we've got some units which look at dance styles in particular, say Bollywood, hip hop. Um, we may look at indigenous dance. Um, and so then you'll bring those physical skills that you develop into, uh, I guess, a kind of an inquiry-based approach to how do you um, make a dance work? And then, and how does that sit in the context of the existing theory and, and history about dance? Um, then, of course, we think about how we can apply um, those dance skills. In drama as well, there are core skills or, or technique skills, as we often call them, um, and there are units then in acting, but also in, in improvisation. 
And there's a particular emphasis in our course on devising theatre, so devising in, in so many different ways, but um, not necessarily just kind of, uh, I guess, taking um, an existing written play, but but developing a, a play from scratch using various means. There certainly are text-based units as well, um, uh, but we really encourage you to, I guess, find your own um, voice as a theatre maker, as, as a performer, and as a practitioner who can kind of bring those um, hard, soft skills that I was talking about before into a broad range of community and um, industry contexts. So, um, Within the um, Bachelor of Creative Arts, so you can see the list of majors there. So dance and um, drama or theatre um, uh, are listed there. And um, as Sian was mentioning before, so you could um, take a combination of a double major or you could do a major and two minors. So, for example, dance and theatre is quite common that people do both of, both of those and you would do eight credit points in each of those. Um, but you can also make any kind of um, combination. So say, for example, you might want to do... Um, drama and script writing or um, uh, drama as a major, sorry, and script, script writing as a, as a minor with Indigenous studies. So, and um, uh, you can actually combine these majors and minors with not just anything in the Bachelor of Creative Arts, but anything in the School of Communication and Creative Arts. So that includes all of the um, majors and minors and or subjects that Sian's already um, covered. So you could actually do a drama and say um, a producing screen content double major. So there's actually a huge number of combinations. There's also the Bachelor of Communication, Bachelor of Design um, subjects. So the, the possibilities are almost endless. And I certainly, if you're um, considering coming to study in these courses at Deakin, I really encourage you to look carefully at, at what's possible because you could kind of build yourself an amazing degree. Um, and good to think ahead so that you know um, where you might start and how that might kind of lead you to, to follow your interests. That's just a little map, I guess, of what I've just said, really, the possibilities. And the possibilities are almost endless. So you could just look at the picture for a minute and you, you know, and I, I do encourage you to have a look at what's available and um, yeah, see what you'd like to kind of build for yourself. Um, these are just two examples of some of our graduates. So Anna Seymour is a deaf dancer who came through the course and has been incredibly successful in mainstream dance companies and has just joined um, a company in um, the UK. Atlanta Eek is also a dance graduate. Um, she's performed all over the world and made, um, uh, yeah, toured a lot of work and, and won a significant number of awards. They're just two examples. Um, we have also lots of less famous graduates, um, lots of people working in the, the community, a huge number of people go on from our course and do the Master of Teaching course and teach in schools, but also go and teach in various community um, situations, dance schools, amateur theatre. Um, oh, there's one thing that I didn't mention about the major and minor, which is really important. We have a new theatre product, production minor starting um, in 2023, and that really is about... Um, lighting, sound, putting on a show. And that's a really great minor to do, say, for example, if you thought you might want to go and work in um, theatre in the community, dance in the community, or even work in schools, because a lot of schools put on productions. So yeah, that's another excellent um, option. So how to apply if you're interested in these courses. There are um, uh, two options, one for school leavers and one for non-school leavers. So school leavers, you probably already know this, you will apply through VTAC. Um, and uh, you go to VTAC directly rather than Deakin and then um, all of the um, uh, forms, et cetera, will be part of that VTAC application. If you are not a school leaver, then you apply directly to Deakin. So all you need to do is just go to deakin.edu.au, um, uh, direct application. So I think if you just put apply Deakin in your Google search, you will be um, easily able to find that and you just go through a portal. So if you have any um, questions about how to apply, you can um, uh, call that number or just email that address. And there are people there all the time um, uh, helping people to figure out how to undertake those application processes. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. Um, we've got the Q&A, live Q&A session coming up next. So get your questions ready and we will um, do our best to answer them. Thanks, everybody. Could I also just add that we we do have an in-person open day in August. So um, that's the 28th of August and you'll be able to come on campus and you'll be able to see our amazing facilities, see our equipment, see our students in action. So that's a really um, a great way to get a little bit more information about the course.
Hello, good afternoon. Um, my name is Sian Mitchell. I am the course director of film, television and animation. Welcome to our session. Um, firstly, I would just like to acknowledge that I'm joining a session on the traditional lands of the Bunurong Bunurong people of the Eastern Kulin Nation, and I wish to pay my respects to their elders past and present. Um, with me, I am joined by uh, Olivia Millard, who is the course director in the Bachelor of Creative Arts with a focus on theatre and dance. We also have Annalise Crocker here, who is our student um, ambassador for today. So if you have any questions to ask um, from a perspective of students, Annalise is here to help you with those questions. Um, so firstly, a little bit of housekeeping to start with. Um, if you would like to ask a question, please type your question into the Q&A section um, in the question panel on this page. And we will do our best to respond to all of your questions during the session. But of course, if we don't get to any apologies in advance, um, you will have the opportunity to ask one of our um, fabulous back of, back of house um, team throughout the day. Um, so we've got a team of experts that will be available on the web chat to assist uh, with any of your questions, um, including any kind of specific international student related uh, admissions or fees queries. So they'll be available all day. So at the bottom of the right hand corner of your screen, you will notice a yellow chat now icon. So please click this um, after the session uh, is ended and we haven't answered your question or you have more questions, you can be connected with our team through that function. Um, okay, so I thought maybe just to start off, we've got some questions already coming in. Thank you so much. We'll get to those definitely. Um, but to kick us off, I think I'm going to ask Annalise a question um, and perhaps just a kind of uh, talk about your experience of um, your, so you're majoring in theatre and drama um, and you've also got a minor in journalism as well. So we can maybe look at how that, how that's working all together. But do you want to just discuss your experience of your major to start with? Yes, absolutely. Um, so as um, was just touched on, I have a major in uh, theatre and drama and a minor in journalism. Um, I have found the my major at Deakin to be so interesting. Believe it or not, every unit is different, um, which I didn't expect coming in. I was kind of like, oh, well, it's drama. Um, you know, every unit will just be like putting on a play or something. But they teach us so much from the theory behind um, drama and theatre we learn about you know the works of playwrights we talk a lot about you know different things like Brecht um, for those of you doing theatre studies um, half on about you know all those different styles a lot um, I've learned about theatre I've learned also about screen work um, I've learned about performing written work dramatic work so Shakespeare through to you know contemporary modern works um, as well as also being able to create our own piece of theatre um, which I did in 2020 um, as a um, group we we put on our entire own performance that we wrote um, all of us had different elements some people did costumes some people did marketing and so forth uh, and we put on that performance entirely ourselves with the direction of our teacher um, and that was online so that was at the start of 2020 so we had to kind of shift from our plan of doing it you know in a theater space to moving mm -hmm. to an online zoom setting as well so getting to learn about that to and moving theatre online, which was something that I never expected I would be doing uh, when I started my major. Um, so yeah, it's a really great one to do. It's very practical, um, which I love. You know, we come and we roll around on the floor and do yeah. all different accents and voices and all that fun stuff. But as well as, you know, we do a lot of reading behind, you know, the theory behind uh, drama and audience reactions and so forth. Um, and it has helped tie into my journalism because um, I know kind of, I guess, how to present to camera. Um, I know how to perform a bit and persuade people. So they kind of like interrelate quite nicely. Um, and so when I'm thinking of, you know, potentially going into a career in broadcast journalism or everything that I've learned in drama can be shifted over to that. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for that, Annalise. Maybe we could just follow up a little bit more. Olivia, I'll bring you into this, just to speak perhaps a little bit more about um, the, the theatre and dance programs in the Bachelor of Creative Arts. Yeah, great. Thanks a lot, Sian. Um, Annalise has um, uh, summed up uh, the courses quite beautifully. I think um, the emphasis is on practical work, but in every single unit, there is also um, theory, reading. So 
all of our units. Um, so in, in the new course um, beginning in 2023, all of the units are on campus in person. And that's something that we really um, uh, realized was very important. So we've brought everything back um, onto campus. So they're really very practical. Um, more hours in our units than you would in some other um, subjects. So that's really great. But also there's always theory and writing um, uh, which support the learning in those um, uh, two disciplines of, of dance and drama. I think um, uh, what Annalise was saying about all the subjects being different is also um, uh, really um, an important point because um, uh, there are both um, units which are focused on technique, but also units which are focused on devising or creating work, learning the work of others and um, putting that into your, I suppose, body or your performance understanding. So it's both kind of taking on existing work, but also very much an emphasis on creating work. And uh, for us, one of the most important things is those skills are really transferable. So Annalise has already talked about how um, uh, her acting can be transferred into thinking about herself as a broadcast um, journalist, but actually the collaboration, um, the kind of, I guess what's often called soft skills, the possibility to, um, to work with people to, to create, to solve problems, those skills are transferable across all kinds of um, uh, work uh, possibilities, I suppose, applications. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think, and it's the same for film, television, and animation as well. There is, of course, all the the applied practical um, skills and knowledge that you'll that you'll learn. But of course, it's absolutely supported by looking at you know um, particular genres or filmmakers or um, episodic television, um, animation, all of these things that you can kind of delve into to um, broaden sort of screen literacies and digital literacies that you that you need to have there as well so it all kind of augments the practical work that um that you do and that kind of I think sort of leads into um a couple of the questions that we've got coming through so um there was one around um do you have to to peruse a large amount of animation in the course if it's not your interest point so by peruse I I, I imagine um the, the person who asked this question was thinking about watching animation or, or delving into particular animation techniques. Uh, in the film, television and animation course, you have three majors. One of them is animation. So if you're not interested in animation, don't do that major. <laughs> um, but uh, in the um, in the film and television focused majors, then you're doing sort of more um, live action um, fiction and non-fiction production work. However, there will be probably some animation um, that are examples that are used for various kinds of storytelling um, or sort of ideas about representation. Those, those things that I've just mentioned that are sort of augmenting the practical work that you do. So there might be some examples of animation in there. Um, but otherwise in the film and television majors, there's two, there's a um, producing screen content, which focuses really on sort of storytelling, script writing concepts. Um, and then producing those. So, the, you know, the role of the producer in that context. Um, and then the second major is a screen production major, which then focuses on the other kinds of skills that you need to create television and film work. Um, so, you know, cinematography, editing, sound, um, acting and directing. So there's a little bit of tie-in with, um, with some of the, the theatre um, and drama work as well with the acting and directing units, television studio production. So all of those sorts of things um, in, the, in the two majors. And then there is the animation major as well. Um, another question here is, are these courses more focused on behind the camera or in front of it? I think this kind of doubles over with what we both do here, Olivia, a little bit. Um, the film and television majors are behind. Um, except for the acting and directing um, for screen, which is that unit I mentioned earlier. So there'll be a little bit of kind of getting to know, if you're coming from a director's perspective, sort of getting to know obviously what an actor does. And, and that's really, really important for directors to, to have that experience. So there is that there. But in film and TV, it is mostly behind the camera stuff. Um, Olivia, did you want to speak to maybe some in front of the camera? Yeah, thanks. Um, so I guess... Um... Uh, for us, what I would say in dance and theatre is um, the, the knowledge is practical and embodied and then that's applicable. So in terms of um, uh, making work or performing work, in order to understand, I, it's just exactly what you've just said, Sian, in order to understand how to make work, um, 
you need to start from uh, participating in that work. So that's very much the case in actually in both dance and theatre. So we have, for example, technique classes. So um, if you're going to do a dance major, each of the units throughout the major will have um, at least two dance technique classes. So for the, any dancers who are um, uh, in the audience, so it will be contemporary classes. We have ballet. We have contact improvisation. Um, for the theatre students, um, that uh, that uh, equates as acting technique classes. So they are kind of embedded in the units as well as um, uh, various kind of, I guess, task-based um, uh, process uh, work. And again, that's about um, understanding how to participate in the creation of a work from the point of view of a performer, but also from the point of view of a maker. And they're so um, uh, interrelated and we're not, I suppose, imagining that you would even know whether you would be one or the other when you finish because most people will end up doing many of those things. So on the one hand, you might be performing in the work of somebody, uh, somebody but on the other hand, you might be uh, making work and often people do multiple things in their career. Mm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess it's, you know, you're thinking about whether where you want to be, whether you want to be behind the camera or in front of it, and there's always opportunities throughout these, these majors and minors that you can explore. And that's the other thing too, you might actually find that you really like to be in front of the camera and would, would you know, prefer to be in that space instead of behind. So it's it's just, yeah, having getting some experience around the different majors and minors and, and um, kind of, yeah, finding, finding your place and where you feel most comfortable and, and happy. Um, Okay, so ah, so this is a question about electives. The electives, what sort of electives can we do in this course for film, TV and animation specifically? But I think we could probably broaden it out to discuss um, electives and kind of, and, and perhaps the flexibility of options that we have throughout the course as well. Um, so with the elective, so, uh, so the, the way that the film, TV and animation course is structured is that you can either do um, two majors or um, a major and two minors. And it can be kind of, drawn from anywhere in the School of Creative Arts and Communications um, with that. Uh, so within that are electives. So I think you've got a couple of electives that you can choose to do. Um, and that can be from anywhere in the School of Creative Arts um, and Communications. So you might choose to do two electives that um, could be from an animation minor or an, the animation course, or you could do two electives from communications. You could do two electives from um, visual arts, photography, anything that you you are kind of interested in, you can kind of bring these elective options into your course structure um, to help kind of support or give you extra sort of um, understanding around where, where you kind of want to head afterwards. Um, so it might be that you want to do perhaps a little bit more theatre um, to get a, to get some some of those sorts of ideas and, or transferable sorts of skills across film, TV, animation, and then a bit of theatre or a bit of dance. So you can do, you can kind of essentially pick and choose. It's really quite flexible in how you approach it. Um, Olivia, did you want to say anything about that? Yeah, yeah sure. Thanks, Ian. I just wanted to um, uh, well, um, mention that we have, um, as well as our, so we have a dance um, major, a theatre major, and then we also have a theatre production minor. So you can do exactly the same as what Sian's just described. You can do a double major. So you could do dance and theatre, for example, or you could do dance and animation, dance and, and pretty much anything. Um, so any combination, as Sian's just said, but also I just wanted to talk about this theatre production minor. So th th this minor is about the kind of um, backstage work, I guess, lighting, sound, um, you know, applying technology to creating live work. Um, so and... Um, that's actually brand new, this, um, this minor, and it's going to, um, I think, add a new level of kind of skill development. Um, so uh, people, for example, could go and work in theatres with those um, skills. So say, for example, you might want to do, say, um, a theatre major, and then you could do um, a dance minor and a theatre production minor. So that would take up your major and your two minors. And as Sian said, there are always two electives throughout your degree, because we have uh, three um, employability units or work integrated learning units. And we also have um, three units which are called the thematic core units. Um, and so they sit one in each of the years throughout the degree. So that does leave you those two spaces for um, electives, as Sian said, from anywhere in the school or faculty, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Alyssa, I might also throw to you for this a little bit because you obviously are 
um, you know, the course that you're doing is quite flexible in how you've arranged it. Did you want to speak to sort of picking electives or, or the units that you're studying? Yeah, definitely. Um, so electives, I would highly recommend doing them um, because they just give you like such an insight into a bunch of different areas that you might not know that you're interested in. Like I know we before just discussed about how um, I do a lot of like, you know, in front of the camera and on the stage and, you know, we all have to do a bit of behind the scenes. I've realized behind the scenes is not for me. I think it's way harder to do behind the scenes <laughs> in front. It's much easier in front. The behind the scenes people are legendary. They do so much. Um, but that was it. So I did like an elective where I wanted to kind of see how behind the scenes kind of ran because I think it then made me a better performer and appreciate the system a bit more. Also with journalism, I just started off doing journalism as an elective because I thought, oh, you know, maybe that would be interesting um, to be you know kind of presenting news um, and I just did it as an elective and really enjoyed it and then decided that I wanted to pick it up as a minor as well so you can try electives from a range of different areas and you know you might just do the one unit to go oh well this is a bit interesting you know I kind of learn a skill here or you might do it and go actually I really like this and I didn't think I would uh, and then you could actually end up doing it as a major or a minor as well so I think always be open-minded when you start it's a good idea to, you know, kind of have an idea of what majors and minors you want to do, but keep an open mind, try a bunch of different areas, and then based off that, uh, work out what you actually want to major and minor in. Great. Thank you for that. That's, that's some very good advice, I reckon. Um, okay, so... Uh... Well, I guess I'll move on. This sort of is the question that ties in, I guess, a little bit to the journalism stuff because there's a, how does the Bachelor of Film and Television course differ from a Bachelor of Arts with a media major? Um, well, the, in, in the School of Creative uh, Arts and Communications, we have um, media majors and minors, including um, those that kind of feed into the Bachelor of Arts as well. They tend to focus a little bit more around you know, what Annalise was sort of talking about. There's a journalism one. There's a sports journalism one, I believe. Um, there's uh, social media and all, the, all of those sorts of things. So there is a little bit of, in terms of the kinds of skills and knowledge that you'd be looking into, there might be a little bit of crossover there. Um, but in film and TV, I guess we're an animation. We're more looking at um, the creative uh or the 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 making of you know different kinds of film forms so you know short film um web series um sort of studio broadcast production television production um documentary filmmaking uh experimental filmmaking so it's a little bit less of a kind of communications focused on on media um, and rather a, a more sort of traditional perhaps film and television focus and, and digital television um, uh, and film focus, I guess. Um, in the BA though, we do have a film and television major, which is actually a little bit more of a, of a sort of screen studies focus. So you do sort of screen studies and culture um, units. Uh, there's a little bit of screenwriting in it, um, but otherwise you're looking at things like, um, you know, looking at audiences, film festivals, um, a bit of film analysis or screen analysis, um, looking at, delving into kind of the language of screen in different ways. So again, I, I've spoke about screen literacies before. So the major in the BA looks more at that sort of stuff. Um, whereas in the Bachelor of Film, Television, Animation, it, it, there is a lot more sort of practical work that you would do. So you get your hands on gear and you go out and shoot, you, you work collaboratively collaboratively with your cohort I stumbled over that word um so you're yeah so there's a lot more sort of application of those ideas that that um that you would get in the the bachelor of film tv and animation um if you're there's also minors that you can choose to do so if you were going to do a, a major in um screen production for example you could augment that with um, a minor in screenwriting or a minor in uh, virtual effects and virtual, uh, sorry, visual effects and virtual production, um, which sort of draws on some of the animation units there. And that's a really interesting kind of combo because virtual production is just exploding around the industry at the moment. If you've ever watched The Mandalorian, then that's, that's probably the prime example of the use of virtual production at the moment. Um, so there are those sorts of options there too. And of course you can, as we've already sort of spoken about, bring in perhaps some other minors from 
other discipline areas to depending on your interest and what you want to do. Um, maybe we can keep going with this and just have a quick chat about the difference between um, the BA in your area, Olivia, uh, yeah. and what's in the in the creative arts course instead. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Ian. So the BA um, is actually the major in the BA is a performing arts major and it's a combination actually of theatre and dance so um, really you would do uh, the the way it's structured is eight credit points um, I don't know much information to give but usually so in every semester you would be um, uh, undertaking four units which is the equivalent of a credit point so over the over a major you do two credit points in first year four in second year and two in third year so the way the performing arts major in the BA works is half of those would be um, dance units and half of them would be theatre with the exception of the final kind of capstone unit which is a, a production creation unit and you would choose whether to do that in dance or theatre so um, uh, and the difference between that and um, the Bachelor of Creative Arts is that you do all of those eight credit points in either dance or in theatre. So if you were feeling like um, you really wanted to uh, delve deeply into becoming uh, a performer and or a maker, then you might choose to do the Bachelor of Creative Arts because you could do that full eight credit points in um, dance or theatre or actually both. Um, so the BA option is really good, I think, for people who want to have a broad um, overview of um, performing arts, also really good for people who are thinking of doing a Master of Teaching um, uh, because that would enable you to um, generate the right number of credit points in order to go into that course, but also to be... Um, so, um, yeah, and there's, there's also a performing arts um, uh, minor as well. So I guess, yeah, that's probably enough information, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but I guess, yeah, that the, the BA is definitely kind of a, a broader approach to the different Correct. sort of discipline areas, absolutely. And then coming into the specialised courses is absolutely, you know, much more practical and applied with those ideas as well. But um, so I, I guess, you know, I just encourage anybody to, to have a look at the different options that, you, that are available um, on the website um, and kind of see what, yeah, sort of what would fit um, where you want to go or where you think you might like to go um, with your careers mm -hmm. in the future. And maybe I could add, um, so Annalise said something great, which is, I think, to um, uh, be a bit open and see what you, what you like and, and finally decide perhaps as you're going along it. But I think the other thing is um, the teaching staff in each of your subjects have a great insight, of course, into what else. I mean, the course directors, of course, so Sian and I in our areas, but also the teaching staff have a really good understanding of what's in units and everyone um, who's teaching at Deakin has... Um, uh, industry um, experience as well so it's really good I think to to get some advice from your teachers as you participate in your subject as as well about what might suit yeah. you and where that might um, lead you yeah yeah that's really that's a really good point absolutely yeah just yeah, talk to the people that are in the space with, with you and get get that advice so it looks like we're, we're kind of getting close to the that's gone really fast hasn't it we're getting a little bit close <laughs> to the end um, of the session but if we're thinking about um uh where you could go afterwards i have a question around that too which is from sylvia um what percentage of graduates get a job directly out of the course well i don't know if i could put a number on that um it's it's very it's a very broad thing it depends on where um, you're wanting to head if you're going to head into for example television then you can look at production studios and things like that um, and uh, if it's in film uh, or perhaps more traditional sorts of film then a lot of that stuff is a lot of students will kind of end up um, starting their own or becoming freelancers and contractors and, and just making their own work and so that still that still counts um, so we've had students who have started their own production companies um, off their own bat because um, they, they've had that sort of initiative to do it and to and know that they just want to go out there and make their own stuff. Um, but I can't actually put a number on it. I don't know the percentage. <laughs> um, I don't know. Olivia, do you, do you have any well, percentages? Well, well, what I would say is um, uh, both of these courses that we're discussing today, they're not the same as, say, if you did a nursing degree, it, um, uh, it's a vocational course, so it um, helps you develop the skills and the qualification to go and 
be a nurse in a particular place. Whereas our degrees are much more um, open. They have a much greater range of skills, but also a much greater range of kind of potential career options. So mm. I would say, I mean, all of our students coming out of our courses have such great skills. They're, you know, they're kind of um, great collaborators. And so in terms of can they um, uh, find employment? The answer is yes, but it's not, you know, like a box ticking. Well, I ended up in a such and such. So um, mm. uh, the other thing I would say is, I don't know if anyone's heard this term portfolio career where people are, are undertaking kind of multiple types of work at once. And it's very common for our graduates to um, be, be doing many things. So they might be, for example, um, teaching theatre or dance. They might be in community projects. They might be making work. They might be performing in work. Um, they might be working in um, arts management. They might be working backstage somewhere. And from my point of view, that's a much more interesting um, career than just kind of going, right, I've done my thing here. I'm in my job and I go there for the rest of my life. And yeah. so because then you can um, make choices about, uh, I guess, adjusting your career as you go along based on the skills you develop, based on the people you meet, based on the um uh things that you come to understand that you enjoy doing so um yeah no no figures but um uh certainly um very employable um our students are and i think really have interesting careers as well yeah definitely um i'm going to throw to annalise in a sec on this as well but i just also want to say that there's within i suppose creative arts and creative industries more broadly that there's the skills that you kind of pick up doing perhaps you know film tv or theater are kind of there's a lot of stuff that's transferable and kind of what olivia was saying that that you know you can kind of move through different sorts of areas within within creative and cultural industries um so for example if you want to do animation um there of course are you know traditional sort of animation screen works that you would be able to work in but there's also things like games the games industry is huge so you can kind of go into um into those sorts of areas that that also need um skilled animators and people who can rig and people who can design 3d environments you know so all of that sort of stuff um you can kind of look into there's 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 as olivia was saying there's many 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 options um across all of that 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 the skills that you learn from these um these courses can kind of give you to to look kind of outside the box i guess a little bit um elise what about what about you in terms of um thinking about career options um maybe looking at work integrated learning and, and that sort of stuff in the course can you speak to that a little bit yeah well i'm actually doing a unit right now um that's called creative careers and contexts um which is a really great unit that it combines um kind of all creative arts students so i'm doing the unit with people studying photography um visual arts and so forth um, and it's an entire you know 10 weeks based on how to build your portfolio ways that you can go and get a job after you graduate so just uh the other week i was at la mama theater uh, in carlton where we went through the space um, and the creative directors there were, you know, talking to us about how grants work um, and, you know, what art they're looking for and so forth. And we've had guest speakers every week working in the industry that we could talk to. Also, one of when we were talking about talk to your teaching staff, when I was doing that site visit, one of the actors who was rehearsing for the performance that night was my improvisation teacher in first year. Um, so they're working in the industry. So definitely talk to them. There's just so many um, different areas that you can go in. And I, I've got one friend who she's doing film and TV at the moment, but she um, has done a forensic science degree beforehand. And she really wants to do um, kind of like crime forensic documentaries when she graduates and kind of that's the stream that she wants to do utilizing her forensic science degree. Um, and her film, TV and animation, you know, and I have other people who want to go on to, you know, do dance or want to be playwrights, do photography. Um, and the unit's been really nice because I've been able to meet people outside of just my like theatre drama specialisation and kind of hear everyone's different pathways and how we could even interrelate and create something together with all our different skill sets. Um, so that's one of the units that I've been doing at the moment. I've got an assignment that I need to finish off tonight. It's due tomorrow. <laughs> um, about my career strategy. <laughs> um so yeah there's heaps of you know units like that there's also constantly um placements which is great because a lot of our teaching staff are in the industry you know at theaters as well and I know they're always like you know rooting for us to to get us placements and get us jobs and so forth so there's heaps of opportunities at Deakin to get out of the classroom thank you that's wonderful we've we've probably only got about 30 seconds to go but I, I guess just to to um quickly conclude this sort of point 
that um, in the course, and I think it was mentioned earlier too, Olivia might have mentioned it, there is work integrated learning units. So you do get the opportunity to sort of think about where you want to go with your career. There's um, yeah support that kind of helps you to perhaps get a placement somewhere and get some on the job experience. Um, so we've had students go to um, do virtual productions at DreamScreen or do live broadcasting with AFL and, and those sorts of places. Um, I think we've got some partnerships with, is it Malthouse? Olivia, yeah, the top of my head. Dance House, La Mama, yeah. as Annalise has mentioned. So yeah. yeah, lots of great opportunities. Yeah, lots of great opportunities there. So you you get you get some experience and you get to kind of meet people as well, which is also really important, I think, too. So that's it. Oh my gosh. Um that went so fast. That's all we've got time for today. Thank you so much for all of your wonderful questions. And of course, um, if you have more, please feel free to use your little chat function down the bottom there and um, someone will be able to help you um, answer those questions, I hope. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for coming along and uh, we hope to see you at Deakin in the future.